Just last week, I put up a post on Facebook. It was a picture of one of my rifles, and I left a caption saying, who would be interested in firearms content? Do I really have a firearms uh, audience on my channel or a part of this kind of community that I've created here? And the response was overwhelmingly positive. Way more comments and likes than I usually get. Um, everyone's saying, yes, please, please, please do firearms content. Now, last year at the beginning of 2018, I had big plans for firearms content and then the whole firearms community or everything relating to that just kind of blew up uh, in Canada with the, with the introduction of Bill C-71 in January I believe it was and then YouTube came up with a bunch of new rules based on firearms and I just backed off completely because I was kind of afraid to touch it for a while kind of wait to see how things pan out and along with that I kind of put uh, you guys know I have a lot of hobbies. I kind of put my firearm hobby on the back burner for a while. Haven't really done a lot with my firearms in the last maybe four or five months. I did a nice bit of shooting this summer, a nice bit of target shooting, especially with uh, 12 gauge and 22. But none of that you guys have seen. I haven't hardly showed any of that on the channel because, like I said, I've been a little bit nervous and I just kind of let it go to the wayside. Now moving forward to December 2018, uh, Ray came to visit. We went on a, a beautiful hike in the woods. Uh, footage here somewhere, if you want to click that link, please watch that. Fantastic footage. I think you guys will love it if you just give it a chance. But we went for a snowshoe, and Ray brought his 12 gauge. And uh, it really excited me because, well, for one, I love guns. And I just kind of put it back in my mind again. And uh, I came home that day after the hike, and it kind of set the gun bug in me again. Long story short, we come to this point now, a couple weeks later, and I have a new gun. Now, I have had a couple 22 rifles. I've gone through, I think, three bolt actions and a semi-auto or two. Uh, I still have right now a Marlin 795, which is a beautiful little gun. But in that extreme cold it doesn't like to run well. I took it one morning, I went in, it was way down to minus 20s, and uh, it just didn't run. It, it misfired maybe 30 plus percent of, uh, of the shots. It just, it just wouldn't run the bolt any sense because it's so cold, everything's sticky. So because of that, I picked up a new bolt action that I'm very excited. Now this is the Savage Mark II G. Here it is, hardwood stock, bolt action. Just a quick check there, mags out, bolts open, chambers empty. This gun has never fired around. It just came in today, and I really like it. It's a beautiful little gun. Now, I'll explain the philosophy I've used for you real quick. Um, like I said, I've been having a little bit of trouble with the semi. I know some of you are probably going to say, you should have bought a Ruger 1022 or something like that. But they're fairly pricey for what you get. My very first 22 was actually a Savage Mark II as well, but it was a different model than this one. I think it might have been the FVSR. It was all done out. I believe it had the I believe it had the heavy barrel. Um, it came with the, the whole skull package, and, and it was a beautiful rifle. It had the Accu Trigger as well, as does this one, the Accu Trigger. It's one of the reasons I picked up this rifle. But uh, after going through multiple 22s now, different renditions, different packages, I decided that this is the precise package that I want. And it represents kind of my philosophy of use really well, and that is just a pack gun. So I got it with the iron sights mounted on from factory. No scope, and I have no plans of putting a scope on this gun. It is just bare bones, iron sights, bolt action, nothing to go wrong nothing to falter you manually run the bolt yourself so in the cold everything should still run right if you've got it oiled well uh it's nice it's i went with the hardwood stock and i think it looks absolutely great so here's a bit of a better look closer look it's not a standard bluing like my marlin has it's kind of a bead blasted black and finish yet yeah, it's not a paint either maybe it's closer to a powder coat I'm not exactly sure but I know it, I have it on my uh, Savage 308 and it is extremely durable much more durable than a bluing in terms of getting wet and scratched and, and nicked and this type of thing much more durable of a finish the uh, the checkering it has a little bit here it's pretty sharp 
but uh, not overly aggressive. You know, it's it's not hand cut checkering either. I believe it's uh, just pressed in checkering. But like I said, that active trigger there is one thing. I really love it's a feature I love it makes for a much better trigger than the standard uh, Savage triggers the rifle is drilled and tapped for uh, for some mounts If you want to mount a scope on there, but like I said, I have no t intentions of doing that the rifle is pretty light It's not real heavy, but uh, it's gonna make a great pack gun. I think it's gonna fill the role I want to fill with it perfectly, so we're gonna clean it down just to get any factory uh, bits of material off there, oil it, then it'll be ready to shoot. I'd also like to make a leather sling for this at some point. I know uh, my buddy Jonathan has been talking about me making a gun sling. So Jonathan buddy, you might get to see me do that, we'll see. I'm just using a little bit of Remington Action Cleaner. It's not real expensive stuff, but it does work. Now I'm using a, a brass rod here. I do have a stainless one as well, but the stainless one is, is bigger than this barrel is. Brass is nice, of course, because it's really soft and delicate on your rifling. It's a lot softer than your barrel is. Now I've run several cloths on the barrel. This is the first one, just to give you an idea at a factory if you've never had a brand new gun come before. Just oil and, and remnants from factory, from, from rifling the barrel and whatnot. So, it's a good idea to give it a clean. Could possibly be a, a few shards in there too, I guess. So, it's not a bad idea to give it a good clean and an oiling. Now, one of the beauties about a bolt action is that you can run from the back to the front and push all your dirt out the front of the barrel. Now, I broke one of the pieces on my brass rod here so it's only two lengths long instead of three I did that a while ago on another gun so I only have enough length to get down through I can't get back up through I can just meet the end of the the chamber there but this gun I'm not I'm not uh, pushing any dirt back in the action this gun is too clean for that so now I'm just using a uh, like a felt and I'm running some oil down that barrel, just a light thin oil after we've stripped it clean see we're out maybe a half inch out into the chamber there beautiful our barrel is nice and clean and oil Now I'm not going to disassemble the bolt and clean everything inside, but I will give the outside a good cleaning and just just look at that. That's why. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to clean the, all the internal components of the bolt, but I'll do that probably on my cleaning after I do like uh, put just so many rounds through it. Now I'll get some oil in there. wipe off all the excess. I did a little bit more than I would normally just so it can soak into some of the parts of the gun here. Now let's see if she feels any smoother with that. Oh, like night and day. That difference between straight out of box and there now is so so much different it was uh, really dry and sticky just not a good feeling bolt at all but now it feels nice and slick and moves quite easily much much happier with it of course it will wear in smoother as well with use uh, those, those sharp edges start to move around the oil start to work in through everything of course like everything just stiff from factory tight to tight tolerances and whatnot and just wears in better once you shoot a box of 500 rounds through it'll run 
nicer, of course, when you run that bolt so many times. Well, guys, that's it for this video. If anyone out there would know of a good 22 caliber cleaning rod, even a kit, wouldn't mind buying a kit. I have a nice kit for uh, put together for my larger calibers, but I don't have a real good 22 setup. So if someone could recommend, I know there are a few cliche brands like Hops and stuff that are obviously good, but if you guys have something that is tried and true for you, let me know down in the comment section. I would appreciate it. Just trying a little bit of mineral oil on the stock there now. I'm just trying to get a feel for how that wood actually behaves. Is it going to behave like real wood? I'm not sure. It doesn't appear to be lacquered. But perhaps it is. Thanks for watching. Hopefully on the next video, if we're fortunate enough, we'll get out for a few shots. A few target shots just to give this rifle a try. Maybe even better. Maybe we'll get for a hike. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if this is your first time here. And we'll see you in the next one.